Hi everyone, and welcome to another video on managing and maintaining your Kyocera Task Alpha MFPs. My name is Sam Hammond, lead product trainer here at Boston Document Systems. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the custom box and its applications for stored printing solutions. This video will be slightly more involved uh, than the typical video, uh, so buckle up and get ready, because here we go. So the custom box represents uh, a printing solution whereby an end user can print to a custom box where a document will be stored for later collected printing. This solution also works in multi-site environment. Say user A at site A wishes to print a document for user B at site B. However, the information contained on this document is of a sensitive nature. Custom box would allow you to send a print job to a user at another site, provided, of course, that the subnets are able to communicate with each other. So, starting from first to last, the first step is that we have to actually build our custom box. Once we have done so, we need to enable the print driver to be able to see the custom box solutions. Once we have done so with that, I will then walk us through actually printing to the custom box and collecting a job from the custom box. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is we want to create our custom box from the either the interface of the copier or the web interface of the copier. I'll show you both. You want to select the custom box option. We would like to add a box. We're going to click add again and then we're going to allow it to choose an automatic box number. Okay, it is important to note this box number once the box itself is created. I'm going to call this box test5. Now, there are a couple other things I can do here. I can increase the storage space allotted to this box. I can set a box password for enhanced security features. I can also set up something called auto file deletion, whereby if I release a job, it will then delete the job from the box after a certain number of days. I also have an option here for delete after printing, which will delete the job after it has been printed. Once I have the settings set up how I'd like, I will click save here. Now it has been completed. We're going to note our box number, which in this particular instance is 0004. It is important to remember that. Now, if I want to build a box on the web user interface of the copier, I will log into the web user interface using the IP address of the copier, which I will do now. Once I am logged in, on the left-hand side, uh, you will see document box. You don't have to be logged in as an admin for this. I will go to custom box under the document box option. Here, I can add or delete boxes. Here I will add another box, which I will call test6. Now notice that this box has a box number of 0005. It is important to note the box numbers when creating new boxes. So from here, I can still access all of the exact same settings that I could from the touchscreen interface. Auto file deletion for automatic deletion after a certain amount of time uh, in days, and then also delete after printing so that documents aren't stored in the custom box. Now, once my box is ready to be created, I will click Submit, and that will add it to the touch screen panel of the copier, which we can see here if I hit Reset. Test 5, Test 6. Now, my boxes have been configured on the machine here. The next thing I need to do is I need to configure the boxes uh, within the print driver itself. So in order to do this, I will select Control Panel, and I will go to View Devices and Printers. Once here, that I will find the print driver that is pointed to the machine with the boxes. I will right click it and I will go to printer properties. Here, I will go to device settings and then I will scroll underneath device options to the final option where it says hard disk. I will double click hard disk and then in here, I can add my custom boxes. So, for example, if I want to scan to test 5, I will put in my box number of 0004 and my box name of test 5. I'll make sure that this is a shared box and I will add it. The next thing I will do is I will add my other box, which was test 6. This is box number 0005 and the name is test 6. Now it is important that 
your box name matches the alphanumeric layout of your other box exactly. There can't be any extra characters, and the name itself is case sensitive. It is also important that you check it off as a shared box. And then I will select OK. It'll prompt you and will let you know that if you want to open this dialog box again, double click hard disk under device options. We'll click OK here, and then we'll click OK again, and we'll close out of Demo Copier 1, which is our control panel where we found the printer driver. From here, we'll open up our document. In this case, we'll go with a generic notepad document. I'll go test print to create my test print document, and then I'll go uh, file print. I'll choose the copier that has the boxes established. I will then choose preferences to point it at the box I wish to print to. I will go to job and then job storage. I will check the box in the lower left hand corner of the icon and then I will choose custom box. Now there are a couple different settings here that I can choose. The first under here is I can use a specific box number. So if I want to print to test 5, for example, which has box number 0004, but no password, it is now going to print to box test 5. The only thing I can do here is I can have it display a list of the box numbers uh, that are on the machine. We'll use this option for now because it's the most user intuitive. So I've chosen display box number list, and I will select OK. I'll then select OK again, and I will click print. Now, after entering in a job accounting ID, because this machine is also configured for color usage and tracking under job accounting, you'll see that I received a prompt to print to either test six or test five, because those are the boxes that we had configured underneath the hard drive, or the hard disk option. So I will choose test five and I'll click OK. And what you'll see then is that if we walk up to the interface of the copier, box test five, now has a document in it. I can open it, choose my document, select print, and I'll just click start print to print out one copy. If I wish to either edit the number of copies, I can do so here, or uh, I can opt to not use file settings for the print settings. Uh, this would be like stapling and stuff like that. It removes all the finishing formatting, uh, or I can use the file settings and I can edit the number of copies if I want more than one. Once I've chosen the number of copies that I want, I simply click Start Print, and the job will begin to print out of the machine. And there you have it, folks. In today's video, we reviewed the custom box concept as it relates to printing for the Kyocera Task Alpha MFP. The custom box is excellent for printing across sites. It is also excellent for printing documentation that is of a relatively secure nature or documentation whereby you don't want it necessarily sitting out on the copier. So thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Have a great day.